What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. Today we're continuing in our teletherapy series and answering the question, how do you charge your clients when you meet with them remotely? There are lots of options for how you can go about doing this, but for today, I'm gonna just show you one option for how to do so using the Square Invoicing feature. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. For a lot of therapists who are used to offering exclusively in-person sessions, they're still only accepting payment through cash or check. Now I know for a lot of us that sounds completely archaic, but I'm sure for some of you watching it's still true for you. I'm gonna walk you through it, don't worry, it's not that complicated. In the age of transitioning to teletherapy, I think it makes sense to accept remote payments rather than having your clients drop a check or even cash in the snail mail, in the mail with the post, the USPS, but that mail. If that's working for you, more power to you, but I think a lot of people are looking for ways to easily transition to remote invoicing options that of course are also HIPAA secure. Now, even when I meet with my clients face-to-face, -face, I use the Square app to charge them in person. And I have a video going over how to set that up if you're interested. One thing I'm not gonna dive into in this video is how to make that Square app HIPAA secure. However, I will link both to that video as well as to the Square website's instructions for how to make sure you set up your Square app so that it's HIPAA secure. It's really easy to set up a free account with Square, make sure that it's HIPAA secure, and get the ball rolling with your remote invoicing in a matter of minutes. Now, because I use Square for my business, I can't show you my Square dashboard because it has my client information in there and... Pfft, Lord help us if I ever did that. So I created a second Square account for private practice skills for the sake of creating this video. So let's take a look at what it looks like. Once you log into your Square dashboard, it shows you an array of apps that you can access here on the left-hand column. Then I suggest you go straight to the Invoices app. So it gives you an overview. If you go over to the left and click on Invoices, here you can see that you can create an invoice. So we click create invoice. Well, I gotta run for now, so I think I'm gonna finish this video in a little while. BRB. And we're back. So first you enter who you're billing to. You do need to enter your client's email address in order to do this. I've never had any clients express concerns about receiving this invoice in their email, but I could imagine a scenario where someone would rather not have this type of thing show up in their email inbox. So you wanna be mindful of that. So as we scroll down, there's an option to add an invoice title. Then there's an option to add a personal message. Before we keep going, my computer fan is making so much noise and it's because I'm screen recording everything and it's such a huge file that the fan is going out of control. Anyway. And then you have the option to send immediately or pick a date. And also you can set the due date. So I usually have it due upon receipt. I believe that's the default for Square, but you can also select a later due date. So let's move on to the line items. Now this does work differently on the computer than it does in the smartphone app. So I'm gonna show you how it works on both ends. But for now, let's dive into the line items. Now you need to add items to your service library in order to do this part. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. I've already added those items in my service library. So you click on it and it shows, oh, right now Marie only has virtual therapy available. So there it is, you click on it. And because I have a sliding scale, now I can enter my price. But if you have uh, a, a static price, it'll just auto fill in that amount. And there you go, it shows the total. Now you, you could of course you charge your client for several different items. Maybe I saw them twice and I'm charging them later. So that way, even if you bill less frequently, you can show the line items and still charge them a single price. And one thing I love about this Square invoicing app is there are many additional options that you can utilize if you need them. The two that are probably most likely to be relevant to us in private practice is one to add a reminder. If you have a client who needs reminders, you can automatically 
set them up. Now, if you don't set up this reminder in advance, it's still an option to send that reminder manually later. I'll show you how to do that. The other feature that we might utilize is this one, the card on file, allow customer to save a card on file. Now, the way this works is if the first time they pay the invoice, if they save their card on file, then you have the option of charging their card in the future rather than sending them an invoice. Now, Square has different processing fees for invoices versus manually charging their card on file, and that's because uh, the latter is a little bit less secure. You can see over here on this website the full breakdown of their different tiers of processing fees for different items. All right, so it looks like this invoice is all set up. You can either save as draft for later or send it. Okay, so I switched back to my second Square login that I created just for this video because I wanna show you how to create items for your service library. So here, back in this list of little apps, you can find items, click on that, and when you're first starting out, there's nothing there, so we need to create an item. So let's say one of your services is virtual therapy. Okay, now if we click save. Now, what if you don't wanna set up these items because that sounds complicated? Well, don't worry, we can do it in the app. I'll show you how. Just to make things a little bit complicated, there are two options as far as what app you download in order to send an invoice through Square. There is the Square Invoices app. You can also use the Square Point of Sale app and that's what I use because it's the same app that you use for charging somebody in person. All right, so once you download the app, go ahead and open it. Now I'm already logged into my app, but once you log in, it looks like this on the main screen. Now if you're meeting in person, this is great. You can type in whatever you're charging and you click the charge button. But even if you're not meeting in person and you're wanting to send this invoice remotely, you go ahead and click that same charge button. And if you scroll down, you see that there's an invoice option. So see, I can go ahead and bill my customer without having added any of those service items. I just manually typed in the amount. Now you can also click the little menu button up on the top left here and it'll show you basically the same apps that show up in the computer desktop dashboard. And when you click invoices, it's gonna show you all your different invoices you've sent out already. What I wanna show you is one last feature. If I go to this invoice I already sent that is not yet paid. All right, so when we scroll to the very bottom, you see that there's an option to send a reminder. Now this is an option available if you didn't set up that automatic reminder when you first created the invoice and your client hasn't paid for a while, you can just click this send reminder button and it automatically sends out an email. Is there anything else? This about covers everything that I use this app for and it's been working like a charm. So if you're looking for a HIPAA secure option to invoice your clients while you're meeting with them remotely, this might be a good one for you to try out. I'll link to a few other HIPAA secure invoicing options in the description box if you're interested. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Leave a comment and let me know what invoicing option you're using while you're meeting with your clients remotely. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. Today's video is brought to you by therapynotes.com. Therapy Notes helps with scheduling, notes, and billing so that you can spend more time with your clients and less time on back office paperwork. Click the link in the description of this video to get two months to try it for free with no commitment. So I know a lot of therapists who meet with their clients. Hello. I don't have that much time to finish this video, but I have to record the screen. What? What you doing? What? Did it look like that the whole time? All right.